Hey everyone, hope you guys had a good week. So, in all seriousness, guys, I know that I do play the sub and I'm not actually that bad at drawing men, so yeah, just thought I'd get that out of the way. But still, it is way more awkward for me to do this than drawing women, and it requires much more concentration and such, and so yeah, this is kind of what this episode is going to be about, so welcome to episode 7 of Reference Wednesdays. So if you're new to my channel or the series, I'm using a reference pack from Graffiti Studio called Casual Male Reference Poses. It's just as great as I thought that it would be, and actually, uh, it has enough variety that I could easily find a bunch of poses that perfectly suit two separate characters of mine that are very, very different in personality. So, you'll definitely be seeing me use this pack again very soon. And if you wanted to pick up this pack or any other by Studio Graffiti, there is a 20% discount code and link in my description. As you can see, they have a huge variety of reference packs specifically made for artists. Alright, so my initial goal here during last week uh, for this episode was to do some warm-ups using this reference pack and then create a bunch of art of my character named Sock in different poses to get used to drawing him consistently basically and make something like a reference sheet for myself to use for when I start production of my comic series called Gloaming Veil, which I'm currently writing. So this is Sock and he's a sweet dum-dum and a bit of a poser but that's for you to find out once I actually start working on my comic so <laughs> yeah. I'm planning to do reference sheets for all of my characters one by one. Unfortunately though, I have been having a particularly busy couple of weeks, which really sucks because I wasn't able to put nearly as much time as I wanted into this. And I only ended up doing a couple of short study warm-up sessions and only one character pose, but that's okay. I'll definitely be doing more going forward and hopefully ramp up the this dev process once I finish this current um, influx of freelance stuff that I have going on. So, since I'm still unfortunately slammed with the work at the moment, this video is going to be more on the chill side with more music intermissions and less uh, of a coherent structure than usual. And I'm sorry about that, but I will make up for it by showing you more real time footage than usual as well. So, hopefully, you guys do like the real time. <laughs> yeah, firstly, I'll talk about how I approached the first study session and tell you why I have such a hard time drawing men. So during my first warm up study session, I decided pretty fast that I will most likely draw the poses more than once. Here is why. Basically, one of the biggest reasons why I have a more difficult time drawing men is simply because I just haven't drawn them enough in my lifetime and haven't fully digested how to make the male body consist of balanced and appealing shapes. Essentially, I haven't gotten down the basic logic behind shape design for male bodies. I do want to say that it's actually easier to figure out the shape design behind female bodies because, I don't know, I feel like this is kind of on the more obvious side, but since there are so many curves in the whole hourglass shape thing, just it makes it a lot more straightforward from a design standpoint. Um, I do understand that not all female bodies are the same, but I'm mostly talking about like the idealized version and everything kind of stems from that and anyway i digress so yeah this is why it's a lot more time consuming uh, and difficult for me to stylize and exaggerate male bodies and by default i tend to take a more quote-unquote academic approach and stick pretty closely to the reference material when i do studies like this and it really only starts coming together once I start defining more structural and anatomical details, etc. But in terms of shape, the poses just don't look very good to me. I was trying a more simplified approach for the second pose, as you can see here, but or you will be able to see at some point in this video. I don't know how well I'm going to do with the editing here, but yeah, 
again, I fell back on anatomical details to sell the drawing in the end, which is just regression in my opinion. So my strategy, my general strategy to combat this problem is to draw the pose twice and make it a bit more stylized and simplified the second time often more exaggerated as well and just slightly different so i focus less on the reference the second time but more on how to make it look good for my particular purposes and figuring out shape design and balance as i go along so also, since I still am not great at this, I can't just remember what my male character's proportions are either, uh, unfortunately, which makes this more difficult in multiple ways, but thankfully, this kind of stuff is relatively easy to modify later in the process. By this kind of stuff, I mean proportions specifically. So total character proportion accuracy isn't really my top priority here. And later on, um, after I actually finished my character drawing that you will see in this video, I did end up changing the, like stretching out the legs a little to make it more accurate to his actual body type. But yeah, I honestly found this to be pretty exhausting the double pose thing and like trying to think hard about shape design and such so for the next pose like the last pose of the session i just pretty much decided to let my brain rest a little and really just went back to the academic approach mapping things out focusing on accuracy which promptly made me bored actually but i also had uh, to start working on a bunch of other stuff like my client work as well past that point thus concluded my first study session and now you can watch the real time of the last post i do think it's a very good showcase of how i map things out very simply usually complicated poses like this with a lot of limb overlap and foreshortening can get really messy when you try to draw them quickly or too fast whatever so if you have issues with compact overlapping poses uh, you can really take note on how patient the mapping out process should be and it is great for learning anatomy so I don't, I don't think it's a waste of time necessarily going slow and just like really trying to figure things out so yeah you don't have to rush through every pose by any means and speed isn't always what you need to get out of every single session so yeah cue music intermission
all right so hopefully that did not put you to sleep <laughs> i finally had time to do another session last night after a whole week of a lot of client work and just rushing to meet deadlines and such so yeah it's been a few days in between which isn't ideal um i do feel like i lost some momentum there this time though i decided to just do a standard warm-up session because i was really eager to get to draw my character afterwards I guess you can't even call this a warm-up because it was at night after drawing client work all day. Yeah, but um, you know one thing I noticed I do almost every single time is drawing a massive torso on the canvas and then having to resize it down. <laughs> I wonder if it's because I learned life drawing on a big newsprint pad and my mind immediately jumps back to that when I start doing these study sessions. Probably the largest drawings I have ever made were all from life drawing sessions back in the day. So sad. <laughs> anyway, not sure if you guys would even be able to tell the difference between how I draw in this session and the previous one, but I definitely took a much looser approach and it was more rushed and even a bit more lazy than usual for me, which I like to do sometimes because trying to control everything all the time too much can get too like just freaking exhausting and uh, that is a personal problem that I often have to consciously combat so as I say this I do realize that they still look very much controlled and can't really be described as anything remotely loose <laughs> But oh well, one step at a time for me. So yeah, I'll show you a couple of these real time poses now. And uh, you can just see me getting bored in real time as I draw these. <laughs> Another music intermission for you.
Alright, so finally I moved on to draw my character, Sock. I pulled up some references of my previous drawings of him that I did a couple of months ago. And I'll tell you a little bit about retaining character likeness. It's something that I wanted to sort of touch upon in this video. Yeah, so in a lot of ways, my approach is relatively straightforward from like a logical perspective. <laughs> Once I have a few pieces where the character looks as intended, I just use those as references until I get used to drawing the character and no longer need visual reminders to their um, particular little details in their design. So this can actually take a long time. I have certain characters, such as my girl Heijin. I drew her so often over the years that I definitely need no reference for her and probably will never need a reference to draw her. But that doesn't mean I'm 100% consistent with her either. I just have her general essence firm in my brain at this point. And it's the same with my other character, Noelle. And it's kind of getting close now with Sweet and Zero, although I still like to glance at their faces from other artwork now and then, just to make sure they're on model. But with the boys, unfortunately, it's a completely different situation. <laughs> so, I drew this one set of poses of my main four characters last year, which I will show you right here. And although I settled for how Sock looked in this one, Looking back at it now, it just, or after I looked back at it, even like a couple of weeks after I drew it, I decided that it just wasn't him and it didn't really look like him. Something was totally off and I just, I couldn't really put my finger on it. Just a totally different vibe and it didn't seem like the same character to me. So a couple of months ago, I decided to essentially quote unquote redesign him, which probably makes little sense to those of you who have been following me a long time and have seen previous iterations of him looks the same right well actually i made a couple of notable changes and i'm going to tell you guys about them next so firstly i firmly decided that his nose is going to be straight sounds trivial as hell but listen this is so tough for me because I always do a little button thing like on all the noses I draw and it's really hard not to do that like my hand just automatically does it and so it takes a lot of effort to kind of like undo that particular stylistic choice that I just keep repeating over and over again and like I'm gonna be honest I'm not too obsessed with avoiding what people might like to call same face syndrome and i am aware that my characters do look pretty similar to each other but i still want them to look like recognizably different people to some degree <laughs> and you know like when you want everyone to be just the cutest it's really tough to deviate from regular perfect proportions at least pr proportions that i would consider to be perfect anyway and you know as a result you would have to rely on like very microscopic changes <laughs> like minute facial structure differences or whatever facial feature differences and i know that this is probably a personal problem but i refuse to let go of my character's attractiveness i have never been a huge fan of drawing like ugly folk i see enough of that in the mirror every day thanks <laughs> I'm joking. Anyways, I do realize that the shape of his nose isn't exactly a notable change, but I do think it helped to differentiate him from other characters of mine. So, yeah, secondly, I'm just going to tell you about that gut feeling when it comes to me and my characters. And that is something I rely on a lot for consistency. So, Essentially, since I fully think of them as actual people and I know a lot about them, they kind of do feel like children to me in some ways. A very common sentiment amongst those of us obsessed with uh, writing stories and making characters. <laughs> so I know when they just don't look like themselves. It's kind of like seeing a friend in a photo and being like, yeah, you look really weird in that photo. You don't really look like yourself. That does not look like you, even though it's the same person, technically, you know? um yeah <laughs> the trick is to figure out why 
And let me tell you, it's hard. It can be really hard sometimes to figure out why the character just doesn't look right. It can be maddening sometimes, to be honest. But yeah, this is why I plan to spend a lot more time drawing them over and over again so that by the time I get to the comic, it will be relatively consistent. Uh, maybe it's just like me being an overachiever or something, but that's sometimes uh, I have to fight very hard <laughs> to combat that particular tendency that I have. But anyways, when I was working on a graphic novel called Grimoire Noir some years ago, I actually think I did a relatively decent job with consistency of the characters, given the fact that I was working on it for like 2.5 years of my life or something. But uh, looking back, I do notice that things got a little bit wonky with the faces now and then. Notably, I started drawing like bigger and bigger noses for some reason. So weird. There was a lot of nose confusion. Why am I so fixated on noses? <laughs> Probably because they're freaking hard to draw, to be honest, but um, I digress. Basically, consistency is the difficulty in drawing characters. Um, it's not hard to just draw one facial feature properly or accurately once, um, especially a realistic one, but man, to keep drawing the same person over and over uh, with a style that isn't extremely simplistic, that's the real challenge. So where am I going with this? I don't even know. Um, I told you guys this video is not going to be particularly organized, but uh, did I tell you that? Well, I did now. <laughs> so yeah, finally, uh, I'm going to briefly tell you guys about why I just draw the clothes onto the naked body without sketching them in first. I just, I figured I'd address this because I guess that's a little bit different from most things that I've showed you before. And I don't know, I figured, you know, that's something that I just share. So yeah, this was a sudden realization I had one time when I was pumping out like a ton of custom design options for client work, uh, characters, whatever, last year. And it dawned on me that the quote unquote sketch that I make prior to cleaning up these different clothes options are actually really clean. So I decided to see what happens if I just skip the sketching part. And it was actually very effective. Yeah. Um, one thing I would like to mention is that obviously the method that I adapted for uh, drawing a bunch of different clothing options is obviously to just draw a unclothed body first and then just obviously swap out the clothing designs on a different layer on top of the body. So that's how I pretty much got into the habit, habit of drawing the body relatively cleanly first without um, like prior to putting any clothes on it. Maybe this is because I seldom draw like very baggy clothes, but I feel like even if I drew baggy clothes, I would still do the same thing because I just like need to know where the body is underneath and uh, make sure everything makes sense. So yeah, um, yes. So as I was saying, uh, I started to try to draw the clothes right on top of the body without even a sketch and trying to do it as cleanly as I can. And I actually think this made me get a lot better at drawing clothes in general. So yeah, in fact, I actually gained a lot of confidence from doing that type of client work in like by doing a bunch of uh, outfit designs in rapid succession under very short deadlines. So yeah, um, it really also helped me adapt to a sort of in-between finishing level where the artwork is, is not fully polished and clean, rendered, drying or whatever, but something a sort of sketchy and yet looking very finished regardless. So yeah, as always, I am eternally obsessed with shortcuts and time-saving tricks, mostly because I still charge hourly, but yeah, probably because I'm naturally prone to wasting a lot of time as well, and um, I do fall into the trap of unnecessary effort. Um, and things that people hardly notice in the end so yes i guess that's pretty much everything that i wanted to cover in this video again i lament the fact that i didn't have any more time to spend on this what i actually really wanted to show you guys with this video was a finished character sheet with a bunch of poses and even some facial expressions but unfortunately that's not what happened because i just did not have enough time but 
I will still hopefully do that in the future and will obviously share the process and the end result with you guys. So yeah, um, like I said, busy week so I gotta wrap this up now but I will most certainly be drawing my characters more and more often going forward. I really want to ramp up the visual development of my comic like I said as well and if you want to see this project come to life and support it basically my current or my forever issue that I'm battling is like trying to keep up a livable scenario when it comes to income so I do often I divert my attention to doing other things and like you know freelance work and such so yeah if you wanted to uh help me spend more time on developing my own personal project which is this comic you can help me out by checking out my shop and my gumroad tutorials or picking up one of these studio graffiti reference packs actually <laughs> because if you use my discount code i do get a small cut of the sale so yeah thanks so much for watching my videos and i will see you in my next one bye